evening everyone I am trying to keep my promise here and deliver a reading within a couple of days from the time I posted the video which was yesterday uh, I let y'all know that I just needed a little slight rest break and you know the energies are truly kicking my arse like <laughs> yeah I can't even begin to tell you um, I just want to note, you know, again, we're in Mercury retrograde. The full moon is in Taurus. 11-11 was yesterday. The energies are intense. They're coming for us all, especially uh, those of us who are open. Okay, we are going through so many tests. Tests of our temper, tests of ex coming, exes coming back. Um, you know, people testing our patience. Um, God trusting our true uh, loyalty and faith. Um, there are just so many tests and you know what I wish the best of luck to, uh, to everyone um, all I can say is especially when it comes to emotions and uh, your mental health if you gotta cry cry if you have to if you're really mad and you have to scream and just punch something I mean I hope you punch a bag or a pillow but <laughs> release it don't hold it in please it's not healthy um, you know, if you're the type, one of the lucky types to express yourself creatively, please do it. Don't hold anything in during this time period. I feel like the energy is coming for all of us. I feel like, um, you know, the more open we are, the more we are open to receive and our human minds do not know how to process it. So I think that the way we comprehend and process it is through, you know, a high level of intensity when it comes to the way we feel things. So please be very careful about that. Always remember to ground yourself. If you need to take a day, I always encourage, please take a day. Um, take a day for yourself to just fill out everything and let the energy pass. Um, you know, and I will not lie. I am one of them who is going through the same thing. You know, and I have a really good support system. And, you know, I just, you know, it, it is so crazy. I just can't even begin to explain. Uh, but with that, I am feeling much better this evening. And I really wanted to put a reading out to you. Another thing <laughs> on my channeled message, uh, my channeled messages video uh, from the one who you're fated to be with. On pile number two, I made a slight mistake. I said six plus one. I'm sorry. Yeah. 7 plus 1 equals 6. A viewer was very sure to point that out to me. And it was so funny. I was just straight howling at the moon. Um, that was really funny. So I don't know what the message was behind that. But I just, that was just insane. I just, I don't know. I guess I just forgot my mathematics, my basic mathematics at that. My basic arithmetic, um, you know, in that, in that moment. So yeah, if you want to go check it out, that was, that was pretty ridiculously funny. <laughs> But yeah, but anywho, um, this video today is going to be about your future spouse. It's going to be where and when you will meet your future spouse and how they will pursue you or seduce you if it comes to that point. Uh, this is a combined viewer request. Uh, it was by JM and Harsha Bachia. I may have slaughtered that, but yeah, it's a combined viewer request. I wanted to put all the questions together and give you all a quick reading um, about your future spouse. And especially in this time around the full moon in Taurus, we are thinking about that one we are going to be with. We want that forever. We want that eternal love. We want that true love that we are going to grow old with, if not, you know, the one we're going to be with who is meaningful in our lives, you know, especially when it comes to love. And, you know, the messages are coming through very strongly. I mean, you know, write down your manifestations. Uh, as I was discussing with uh, Ms. Anita Knight in the in the comments, I mean, you know, um, write down your intentions, burn them, do water manifestations. Just, you know what I find it easier to do? I listen to music. I really do. I listen to music and I can play out a whole scene in my head and I think that's where the music telepathy comes from. Uh, one of my very, very good friends, I just, you know, I was really encouraging her because she was, uh, we were talking about, you know, the twin flame connection, you know, your future love connection. And, you know, she's really beginning to open up. And, you know, I was telling her, I was like, you know, I wouldn't doubt if you start having song telepathy, psychic impressions, you know, thoughts, you know, you really start to resonate with who your future partner is. And you just really start to know who you're going to end up with. 
And you know this through everyday people that you encounter, you know, you know, characters that you see in a movie. I really believe in that. If you're really attracted to a certain type, and I'm not talking about, you know, if it's, um, say, Jai Courtney <laughs> in a video or um, what's his name? The guy that plays Ragnar on Vikings, you know, that's who I think is gorgeous. But, you know, I've always been attracted to, like, the strong, resilient types um, who feel more than they show. And I know that's a huge clue to who I'm going to be with. Um, but, you know, you just, you really start knowing within. And it's like you just, you could see yourself with someone with these, you know, set of eyes. And, you know, you know that, you know when it's not coming from a shallow place or a place of wishful thinking. It's just someone that you truly resonate on a soul level. Like, you can understand them, you just can't explain why, you know? Um, but with that, you know, the full moon is here. We have a full moon each month. Sometimes, I believe we had two in one month. I, I can be dead, dead wrong, but... You know, the full moon energy is a time to really get those answers if you, and you know, it, it doesn't have to be a huge ritual. Just before you lay down at night, just say, you know what, God, um, I'm really open to receiving answers. I would like to know who my twin flame is, who my future spouse is, etc., etc. The possibilities are endless. You might find that some nights you do not dream anything at all, or you cannot remember your dreams. That is usually the case. But when you wake up, you might, you might feel loved. You might feel a certain type of way. And that there is your answer. And it's not something you have to train yourself on. It's just something you need to start taking notice of and have patience with yourself. Nothing is set in stone. You know, what, truly what works for me might not work for everyone else. You know, but, you know, as I was... Um, I was, you know, I was uh, messaged on Instagram uh, by a viewer. <laughs> she had just ran into my channel and, you know, she was just so sweet enough to let me know that I was really inspiring her to explore her own abilities. And it was just a really sweet conversation and I really appreciated it. And, you know, I told her what I wish someone would have told me a very long time ago, you know, because when I was first starting out, it was just, you know, buy this $50 book and, you know, have this $500 session and, you know, go outside and sacrifice a chicken to the... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, you, I mean, you get my meaning. I mean, everything was just so freaking just a huge ritual, just a huge amount of money to pay. And it was just so sad because this is something that is within all of us. And especially when it comes to love, who does not want love? You know, and when, especially when it's a true love, I mean, we can want love, but not really understand why we want it. And then that's where the spiritual path opens up to start healing ourselves. And when we start healing ourselves, we open ourselves up to higher abilities. And when we, you know, when we're granted those higher abilities, because we're truly working on themselves, we can be well on the way to love. And, you know, we just never realized that it was just certain things we had to work on. And, you know, it doesn't take much. It really doesn't. But it, the experience is different for everyone. The lessons are definitely different for everyone, okay? Um, with that, you know, going on to the reading here. So there are three piles, okay? Here is pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. All right, so again, we are covering a future spouse. Where and when will you meet them and how will they seduce or pursue you? Okay, whatever I can get, I'm going to get and uh, give you the message. All right, so with that, again, here's pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. And I will see you at your pile. All right, pile number one. How will you meet your future spouse? Let's see here. I feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, I had a frog in my throat. I wanted to say something and I'm kind of debating on it, but I'm just going to go on with it, okay? I feel like for two of you out there, um, I don't even know where the two is coming into my head, but I feel like you're going to have to travel due to an actual death. Now, please do not be scared. I feel like this death is not directly related to you. I feel like it might be more of a friend. Um... It can even be like an ex-boyfriend who you were close to their family, something like that. It's not directly related to you, but you are traveling in the event of a death. And it's happening with great speed. If not, it is the death of your spiritual self. It's the death of an old part of you, actually. Um, 
you know it's just the death of old beliefs the death of an old way of thinking the death of you know who you were in the past okay and I feel like because of this it might even be like the death of a relationship um what I get with this card um you might be leaving a very very toxic relationship and the best way to cope with this and because you're able to you decide to just travel completely travel to a new part of the world travel out of state but this is not within your state this is not within your town or city it's just nothing like that you are totally getting out of where you were um because it was the end of something okay And I feel like this is just sudden. You just decided, you know what, you know, this is already over and done with. I need a new change of scenery. I don't feel it's so much a relocation. I feel like it's more like an extended vacation. You were granted an opportunity and you took it. You took it straight away. You meet them through traveling, though. I feel like you could even meet them at some type of bank or money loan office or maybe like an office where you're exchanging money like US dollars for some type of foreign currency and let's see here even for some of you it can be trouble like not trouble <laughs> you might run into an issue when you you know, arrive at the airline in that foreign country and they don't want to let you through right away. And you're kind of just pleading your case like, hey, I'm not here to do anything bad. I'm just here to visit the country. You can let me in or not. And this person is some type of official or in an authoritative position uh, to grant you access or not. OK, but I feel like it's not going to be nothing too drastic. It's nothing you're going to stress about. Maybe it's even checking your bags and they work for the airport. They're a part of like that country's like TSA or whatever. I, I know it as the TSA. Um, like an agent of some sort. Or, you know, you're just going to change your foreign, you know, your currency. And you're like, hey, you know, like I've already been educated or I've read up on, you know, how much I'm supposed to get for my U.S. dollar. You know, give it up. You know, you might be getting less than, you know, you were supposed to. Something like that. Like you're really trying to prove a point. But it's definitely while you're traveling, you're meeting them while, and they're definitely a foreigner. They're a foreigner. <sighs> and I feel like they're going to put themselves in a position to meet you. They're going to put themselves in a position because they saw you. They probably saw, probably saw you while you landed. Maybe it can be um, like a travel agent that was boarding the plane at the same time you were. And, you know, they're in that same, you know, um, you know, they have to go to, to that like um, they have to go to that uh, foreign currency exchange post or something like that. Like they just kind of follow you. Nothing creepy. They just they're at the right place at the right time and they're they see their chance. I feel like they're really patient with you. I feel like you're not taking anyone's crap. Like you're like, hey, I didn't come here to fall in love. I didn't come here to meet nobody. So you need to go on your way. And they're like, well, you know what? Hey, you know, don't you just want to, you know, kind of have a friend like I'm familiar with the area. Don't you want kind of a guide? And you're like, I can take care of myself. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> and, um, you know, they're just right there. And they're just like, hey, I'm not a bad guy. But if you need me, here's my number. That's what I feel. And I feel like you will, you will really take a chance, like you, you'll really get like a good vibe from this person and you will take a chance. Like, um, I feel like, you know, you might get their number and call them that night and go on a date the same night and they're going to treat you, you know, like a lady. They're going to show you that really guys are not all the same. But as I said, you know, you might be going through a breakup or whatever. You might feel you're on the rebound and this person's really going to show you like, hey, not everybody's the same but it's definitely like a foreigner or like someone who works like with the airline or something that puts themselves in a position to be around you and you know deal with you so they can get to know you better and they do not stop yeah they don't stop I mean they're not gonna stop even if it's like an agent at the airport you know they might like 
take your contact info down, um, get your, like, your hotel address or something to follow up with you, and, you know, they're kind of, I feel like they might be slightly abusing their power on purpose to kind of get to know you, but then again, this is your future spouse, it's nothing creepy, I think, it's just more like, you know, they know what they want, they feel a connection, and they're getting it. And then that's how they pursue you. Like they just put themselves at the right place at the right time. They make you feel beautiful. They make you feel like they're being patient with you. Uh, they make you feel like, you know, they're genuinely trying to take their time and getting to know you. Not just as a date. Not just as someone they think is very beautiful. You know, someone that they're really genuinely getting to know. <laughs> and how long will you meet this person? It's up to you. It's up to you, Seven of Swords and the Six of Spears. Let me see here. This can be... I'm filling in the time of Gemini. From the months of Gemini, so late May to Leo. Late or um, early August. June, July, July, August. Okay, yeah. So, um, late May to mid-August. Late May to mid-August of next year, you're going to meet this person. If it, you feel it's going to happen sooner than that, I feel like you can manifest this connection very, very soon. Within no more than six weeks. Seven days to six weeks. For me, swords is quick action. It's days. It could be hours. It just happens in spears, uh, wands. I feel those are more weeks. Okay, so if you really think positive and you really start like kind of opening yourself up, maybe you're already going through a breakup or a t it could be any type of change. Okay, it doesn't have to be an actual physical romantic breakup. Um, it can be like a change in attitude, a change in job. It can be something that you're just quitting completely. It can be moving out of your home. Um, any, any type of change you're making and you decide to travel, it's up to you. So if you decide this is going to be within the next seven days, it can happen. And I guarantee that that love will be there. I'm very confident in that. But, um, again, seven days to six weeks or no later than late May of next year to, uh, mid August of 2020. Okay. So it's, it's definitely up to you. It's either right away or it's next year around this time okay but it's coming it's coming in fast and it's ready it's going to come when you're ready to make a change and i feel like this change is something that you decide okay Alrighty. so with that pile number one that is how you will meet your future spouse i do hope you enjoyed that um if you liked it please like share subscribe and um as always thank you so much for watching have a good night Pile number two, pile number two. So how will you meet your future spouse? Okay. You're going to meet them at a time in your life when you are... I feel like you're going to be worried about your finances the most. You're worried about your future in general. You don't know which way you're going. I mean, you may have gone to school for one thing. You're not really happy in learning the subject. And you're just like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Uh, maybe you've put yourself through school or your parents have really paid for this schooling and you're just like, my God, I feel like I just had one shot and this was it and I think I blew it because I'm not going to be happy doing this. That's what I'm feeling for some of you. Uh, regardless, though, you might be at a job or maybe um, at risk of losing a job. At some, I mean, at some point in your life, it's when you are the most worried about your future and I feel like overall you don't have anything to worry about I feel like everything's going to be okay I just feel like you're just hitting that point in life where you're really really concerned about you know where you're going to be at in the future and I feel like when this happens this person will come along right away and they offer you some kind of help it can be maybe like they're offering you money they're offering you a loan they're offering you an opportunity, though, to better your finances, to better yourself, and to definitely cons um, to secure your future. Excuse me. Why did I think of concern? Okay, I'll get back to that if it comes to me later. 
But what I feel is that it's a time when you just, you feel like you have no hope in anything. You feel like everything's going to go bad. And this is someone that you, you may have seen or been made aware of. Maybe you may have heard of them. You may not have even met of them. Maybe you heard like people talking to them or something of that sort. You may not have been attracted to them at first, but like, it's like they give you this new start. Or maybe it can even be like um, not so much a person. Like maybe this can be at a time when you change jobs or change uh, schools. And you were like, well, you know what? I never considered to work for this company, but I'm going to give it a shot. And boom, you meet your person. They give you that opportunity. They're like a boss or like up there with the managers. And you get to meet them. And if not... It can be when you're actually changing schools or something or changing majors or changing, a, you know, maybe you decide to take, um, I don't feel like it's as minor as a little night class. I feel like this is a huge change, though. It's to secure your future. And I feel like they're behind that new opportunity they're giving you. It's a time where your life is just really being contemplated. Okay, the word wasn't concerned. It was contemplated. You're contemplating life. You're contemplating the moves you're going to make. And you're contemplating the changes you're going to have to make in order to improve your life and be exactly where you want to be. You want to be happy at what you're doing. You want to be happy with your career. You want to feel happy to go to work. That's what I'm hearing. Who doesn't, right? But to you, this just means the world, all that and more. That is worth more than making a million dollars. You don't want to be miserable. You don't want to stress. You want to be happy. You want to be fulfilled. You want to feel fulfilled in your career. But yeah, I feel like when you finally make this, um, when you're at this point in your life, this person's going to somehow be in a position to grant you that opportunity, financial help, or they will be like on, I'm getting like a big position. I, I feel like they're going to be like on the board of directors or they're going to be like high, they're going to be a well-respected member on the manager team of this company you're going to work for. I feel like it's a new company though. Other than that, or this can even be like an investment, um, a banker or someone who gives you investing advice, a financial advisor, someone like that. And they're going to just totally turn you on to game. And I think that's how you could know them, too. Like maybe it's someone through a bank, you know, a, a family friend who knows their money, like an accountant, someone who really puts you up on game and gives you that new start. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, they're going to come in and help change your life for the better. Yeah, it'll be at a time when you're just down and out. And, like, I feel like through someone you might meet them. You know, they might just say, well, hey, you know, go see my tax man. You know, he usually gives financial advice. Something, something of that sort. It's just a simple scenario that you didn't even see coming. How will they pursue you, seduce you? So they see you as a woman who's very intelligent, you're very intuitive, you're very sensual, you're, you're just all out feminine. They see you as so beautiful. You have the full twice, so I feel like the way they'll pursue you is to let you know, like, hey, you're on the right track, I can give you a new start. And I don't feel like this is like, hey, I think you're beautiful, let me help you out financially. It's not like that, it's not disrespectful. I feel like they give you the respect of a woman with her own mind and a woman who wants to establish her independence, a woman who uh, probably is already independent and wants to continue being independent. They love that in you. And I feel like, you know, they're, they're going to give you, they're going to like pave the way. You know, that's how they're going to seduce you. They're going to pave the way for you or at least, you know, put you up on game on, hey, you should do this and this and that, A, B, C, D, and you can be very successful. But I feel at the same time, they're going to give you the world. They're going to, um, I feel like you'll be seeing this person a lot. So it might be some type of financial advisor. It might be some type of somebody who's going to give you a new start, like a loan even. I don't see the six of coins here, but it's like there. I, I feel like a new start. I keep hearing a definite new start. Uh, this is the, the second pile, but I'm already getting like a picture in my head. Well, 
where you two are talking in a professional setting and like he just tells you shit out like you know look I'm very sorry if I'm coming off the wrong way but I just really feel something here and I really want to take you out and you're just like well you know I kind of want to keep it professional this is my future here and he's like hey you know no harm no foul you know let's just go out for coffee and if it doesn't work out you know I'm back to being your advisor or something of the sort like you're employing him but he has the key to help change your future and I feel like he thinks you're so beautiful he's intimidated by you but he still makes a move and he w literally worships everything about you he worships the ground you walk on he sees so much potential in you and He sees the potential for abundance in you. And he's not out to get what you have. I feel like he already has his own and he has a lot. But he sees that you want your own and he has no problem helping you get that. So the way he'll pursue you is, I mean, he lets you know you're just a gorgeous woman. You know, he wants to go out with you. And I believe you will go out with him. And I feel like during that time, like to seduce you, he just makes you feel like you are just the most god goddess gorgeous most beautiful woman on this earth no one can compare to you and he lets you know that and he makes you feel that way as well which is really important in my opinion i'm sorry but for some of you i wouldn't doubt it if you have sex on the first night no judgment no judgment when will you meet him I feel like you're ready. You're very, very, very ready. He's probably already in your midst. He's probably already, as I said, in your circle. I feel like you're going to meet him through someone else. I feel like he's already seen you and he is just totally intimidated by your presence. He thinks you're just so gorgeous, maybe even out of his league. I feel like you can meet this gentleman within three to seven months, definitely. Yeah, three to seven months. Um, no later than Taurus, the month of May of next year. You're ready, but I feel like he's not ready. I feel like even if you two were to come into contact now, he's not ready. I feel like he sees you as this beautiful woman who has her own, and he feels like he does not stand a chance. But when he finally, like, gets to know you, you know, through, like, you know, usually with the financial advisor, they have to ask about your financial history, your earnings, what you spent on, et cetera, et cetera. And I feel like he's going to see, like, wow, she's fucking beautiful, but she's a real person just like the rest of us, you know? And, you know, he's just really going to, like, fall for that. Like, you're so down to earth. <laughs> I feel like like he's like he's not judging you, but he's like, well, she could have made better judgments with that part of her money or something like that. But he totally admires it because you always seem to have a good reason to spend your money. And like he just he just sees something else in you. He just he appreciates the person you are. And then that's when he kind of falls for you and finally works up the courage like, OK, if she rejects me. Guess what? We're still working. You know, she's still employing me. So, you know, why not? Doesn't hurt. And he finally musters up the courage and just says, hey, let's go out for coffee or whatever. You know, let's discuss this during dinner or something of the sort. OK, so pile number two, that was definitely your reading. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Um, just let me know. All right. So thank you so much for watching. You have a beautiful night. Bye. Pile number three, pile number three. OK. How are you going to meet your future spouse? This is when you're out and about. You are going to be partying. You're, you're like at a, a social event. I feel like this can be something to do with boating or canoeing or... You can even be out at like um, some type of um, bonfire. That's what I'm getting with the wolf. Yeah, but it's somewhere where there's definitely drinking involved, somewhere by the water. And I feel like it's somewhere like in the evening tonight. 
I feel like your future spouse will be observing you, um, maybe from the corner of the room. He's a person who observes. He's a person who kind of like, uh, obs you know, kind of fills the atmosphere around them. And they kind of, you know, they just observe people around them. Instead of getting drunk and stupid, they're right there sipping like a whiskey, you know, or whatever. And, you know, they're just kind of watching, observing, not watching. They're observing. A lot of people watching. And I feel like they slowly make their move. Like, they kind of have their eyes on you. They kind of try to, you know, place their attention elsewhere. But you, you, you truly, truly stand out. Um, yeah, and I feel like they just kind of slowly make their way across the room to you and just kind of make, um, you know, a very, you know, I feel like they want to get to know your, how you think and why you're just like, they see you like so different aside from your friends. Like, I feel like if you're a lady or even a guy, you know, your friends are more wild and you're just kind of there. And you're kind of there with your own drink. And not that you're observing people, but you're just like, you know what, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm on my phone. I'm just laughing at people acting dumb around me. You know, I make conversation, but I'm not exactly out there dancing or, you know, you're not acting a fool. And they really see that in you and they're really intrigued and they just kind of make their way over slowly. And they're just like, you know, introducing themselves and getting to know you. And I feel like it just goes from there. I feel like the first night they meet you, they are going to try and sexually seduce you. This is the only pile that I get this for. But I feel like you kind of, you kind of wrestle down their sexual urge and you're like, no, not today. Like, it's just not going to happen. But I feel like they see you as so gorgeous and they let you know, like, I think you have a beautiful body. I think you have beautiful breasts. But if wait you want to do, we'll wait. And I, I feel like, um... I feel like they're a very attractive individual. I'm sorry. I feel like they're very gorgeous. I feel like they have a nice body themselves. I feel like they're just, I feel like a really, really, really like a strong masculine energy. Yeah, I feel like you might even notice them and just kind of like purposely try to ignore them. I just feel like they're just gorgeous in each and every way. And you wait for them to make their move on you. Even if that takes all night, you just wait and you just sit there patiently. And yeah, they make their way over to you. And I feel like, you know, they make their move to you. But they also like try to initiate sex on the first night. And it's not that they're trying to be disrespectful. This does not mean give it up on the first night. Don't go there, please. I'm sorry. But I'm just saying, like, I just feel like they don't feel like they're just trying to get their kicks. I feel like they feel like such an emotional, spiritual and sexual connection to you as well. That they want to, you know, they want to do you. And you just kind of like say, hey. I'm feeling you too, but it's not happening. You need to go take a cold shower. And, um, for some reason, okay, for some reason, this is going to piss a few females off. Ladies, if this is not your reading, it's not your reading. Trust me, it's not a personal reading, so it's not like I mean it towards you. Don't get mad, please. But I feel like through observing you, because I feel like this is a really smart, very intelligent man who feels people. And I feel like he can see through people. And I feel like he sees through you. And what I feel is that he, like, when you try to, like, say, like, okay, well, I'm not fucking you tonight. So you need to just kind of go about your way or just, you know, if that's what you want, it's not happening. I feel like he'll try to divert, like, he'll try to, not divert, he'll try to give his attention to other females around him and you know he knows that this is somehow making you not jealous but I feel like you have a very competitive in nature you don't you don't get your heart broken I feel it's more like you fight you fight to win you play to win um it's a game to you not in a negative way but you just, you kind of know what he's doing as well. You see through him and you're just like, okay, you want to make me jealous? You know, I'm going to, I'll go after you, but I'm going to win you. And when I win you, I'm going to make you sorry. And I feel like it's just a little tit for tat type of thing. But you two really level each other out. Like he's never met a woman with men like him, but he's just on a whole other level. He's trying to really get your attention. He's trying to get your affections. And like I said, I mean, he comes off a little too strong with you. You wrestle it down. So he's like, okay, 
I'm going to go flirt with other ladies in front of you. And I feel like you're watching him be this stud. You're, you're watching him be this stud. And he's gorgeous. The women are going for him. And you're like, you know what? I know I got this mofo in the palm of my hand if I want him. And I know I can get him. And when I do get him, he's going to know that he messed with the wrong one. And I just think it's funny because I think from there on, it just goes, it just goes from there. The rest is history. And you two just, you know, you go like straight towards marriage. So and how long will this happen? Oh, shit. Within the, <laughs> within the next few months, my dear. Within the next few months, straight out. This is the only pile that has a straight out answer. I feel like you're manifesting this connection. Most definitely they're manifesting it too. Yeah, they try to manipulate the situation and all that they do. They're really intelligent. But what they don't know is that you're very intelligent as well. You can see through them as well. You know their intentions. And you just know what they're trying to do. And you just play it right back at them. <laughs> so yeah, within the next few months, okay? see the magician and six yeah i don't feel like this is months this can even be within um oh yeah you know like within the next few months six weeks but for some reason i feel like you can you can really if you're out if you get out there a lot in the bar scenes i feel like you're running to this person much sooner i feel like they're very active and i don't feel like they go out to party hardy i feel like they go out just to relax and have a drink for some reason i feel like they don't like drinking alone they will you know go where they're invited but they'll just kind of sit there in their corner so i feel like within no more than the next few months okay the next few months but if you want it to happen sooner get your butt out there and start going to bars start going to clubs start going out to social events with drinking that's how you're going to meet this individual they're not an alcoholic don't worry just get out there okay definitely get out there and i just i just feel like i just see this guy i really see this guy he's really well put together even if he's wearing jeans, he has a really nice shirt on. He doesn't wear tennis shoes. He wears boots. He just he just looks damn good, girls. This is the pile where I'm getting a real strong a sense of, like, when you see him, you even want to jump his bones because he looks that good. Like, I can even hear, like, your friends be like, oh, my God, who is that guy? He is sexy. Like, I'm even hearing that. And you just kind of take notice of him and you just put your attention elsewhere because you're like, okay, like, I know. I already know. I don't know, I just, that's just something I hear, but I feel like he has like a whiskey glass or something, like he's sipping a drink, he doesn't have a mixed drink, he doesn't have a beer, he's sipping whiskey or scotch or something, he's really, he's, he's on a whole other level, <laughs> but yes, ladies, within no more than the next few months, okay, um, of course, if you're a man watching this, just reverse my words, okay, it is what it is, you might see a woman sipping her wine, you know, it's just, the man's going to sip a man's drink, and I did the quote-unquote on purpose. A woman's going to sip a woman's drink, whatever that means to you, okay? So keep that in mind. Okay, so pile number three, thank you so much for watching. You have a lovely night, all right? Take care. Bye.